In November 2014, Tamir Rice was killed right here in this park. But 10 days before Rice was killed, Tanisha Anderson, a 37-year-old mom, was also killed in police custody while her family watched. They say her case, like so many other African-American women killed by police, slipped through the cracks of our public attention. Who's paying attention to who's slipping through cracks? Who's blowing the whistle on what's happening in our society? Those are the questions at the heart of this election. But is the process getting to any answers? I believe if, um, if it, it had it got the publicity that it should have got, his life might have been spared. You know, because you can't come on a to a situation and don't de-escalate it. You, you're supposed to de-escalate the situation, not not go from zero to a hundred. And it, that doesn't help the problem. And in Tamir's case, he didn't really have a chance. You know, it was like a couple seconds and it was over with. In my sister's case, she had a chance, but the officer that killed her didn't give her a chance. This is just a rough situation, you know. We had a couple phone calls that were made uh, for assistance. Um, we got the wrong assistance you know, when I look at it at the end of the day. I don't want to get too much off in the details, but uh, it turned out tragic. It turned out tragic. You know, she was mistreated, you know. Uh, civil rights basically violated, you know, forced into a situation that she had every right to resist and not want to go, she wound up dead because of it. It's pretty rough. She needed assistance. Why did she need assistance? She was basically having a real bad day that day. Some things had transpired um, with her. She had an operation and, and um, you know, one would think you would you would think by now, after a year and a half or close to two years, it would be easy to talk about, but it's still not easy to talk about. You, I've been asked this question so many times by so many different people, and it's still not easy to talk about. So why do you put yourself through the pain of answering the question? Why do you think So the world will know. You have to... You have to say it to get it out there. You have to say it to make people understand what could happen to one of their loved ones by the police, by making a person that has rights not want to do something, especially if they're not armed, um, they're not threatening anyone, they don't have a weapon. That is their right to say, no, I don't want to do this, or no, I don't want to do that and then in turn to be made to do it. And then on top of that, you die from it. That's what the people need to hear. In the wake of what happened, people referred to her as having had a mental illness. Well, that's touchy right there because I feel like people are focusing on the mental illness that she had opposed to the person that she was. There's a lot of people walking around here with mental illness. As I said, it's a chemical imbalance. It's something that they didn't ask for. It's just a chemical imbalance. It's not to say they're crazy or they're off the rocker, but who fights for them to have the right balance? Somebody has to fight for them to be on the right balance. And if they should, tilt over that day, knowing that they have been on the right balance, it takes something very, very dramatic to tilt them over. So it's not like they walk around just crazy, mentally ill people and, and don't know what they're saying or don't know what they're talking about. It's not like that. Your case is ongoing, yeah. and the particulars of your case are really important. But I also want to say that so much of what you've said and what I've heard you say when we've talked before goes way beyond your personal case. Yeah. Who's getting assistance? Who's prepared to give assistance? We're in the middle of an election campaign. 
Right. Are people talking about the important issues, in your view, in this election, Joel? It's a lot of promises that's going to be made so everybody can maneuver to get where they want to be and then we'll see what happens as the next four years or the next eight years come on. But what I see outside every day, no. I mean, there's nobody. I mean, how can you make changes for something that's not happening now? What do you mean? You know, how so can you make promises to the world or to the people for issues that are ongoing, that have been ongoing for many, many years that hasn't been resolved? Like what? like um, the health care, the mentally ill, um, upper wages uh, for people that's working, minimum wage. I mean, we're still fighting a whole lot of issues that's going, been going on for years that hasn't changed. So they're talking about the wrong things. They're, they're truly talking about the wrong. What about the things that matter, that we stop killing each other, that we treat each other like human beings? What about those type of things? Yeah, and what about happen with, with proper police training? You know, when you're dealing with the anyone, mentally ill. Anyone, especially the mentally yeah, ill. Yeah, especially but, the but mentally ill. anyone, how you treat them. Because you wear a badge, you can do what you want. No, people have rights. That's right. They have rights. That's right. Have any of the people running for office in this election come talk to you? No. No. Nobody's from the city's been to talk to us. To this day. 